First of all, I gotta say, is it Chocobo or Chocobo? You can say I've either or. I've always said Chocobo. There, you can say either or. I've heard it both. Uh, AKA the worst part of that entire game is that saucer <laughs> racing. I don't feel comfortable doing this. Even though I was bullying Danielson throughout the whole movie, and I was perfectly fine punching him in the face and stuff like that, but uh, sweeping the leg, you know, that's hands off. That's hands off. Whoa. <laughs> I know this nostalgic episode is going to leave 50% of anybody that watches this video going, the fuck? Like, they're going to be Googling half of this by the time they're done watching this, for sure. <laughs> Toe Jam and Earl, what the hell is that? Oh, I know. And we're probably showing our age, in which all of us, we definitely are vampires. Everybody. Welcome back to RPG. We are just a bunch of really passionate geeks here. I am Kiwi, along with me. Everyone, Justin here. And I'm John Wolheim, your Kirkland Signature, Chris Hardwick. I mean, that's what I would have said. Yeah, how's everyone going today? Hey, so far so good. I mean, uh, can't complain with the coffee, at least. Yeah, John, I love, the chrono, I love the chrono Trigger shirt. Uh, oh, this old thing? Yeah. Has anyone <laughs> played that game? I don't know. It's only one of the best ever made. You it's know, like the I Justin think, Williams games. I think we pressured him into wearing that, actually. You know, when we were chatting last, uh, he was the only one that wasn't wearing something at least a little geeky on his shirt. So I think it might have been peer pressure, huh? Well, John's fully... known for wearing geek shirts um, ever since I've known him. I make it into a game. Like, what is John wearing today in his videos, on his LinkedIn videos? <laughs> what ridiculous shirt. Yeah, yeah. I've I've really fallen into a an absolute just just sinkhole of Asterian shirts like there's a there's a lot of them out there I've started making them now at this point because there's just they're just so good they're so good you know my wife uh she's got something to say every time she looks in my closet and it's just rows of ridiculous childish t-shirts she says when are you going to be a man and start wearing some button-ups not anytime soon by the way. I have button-ups <laughs> that are geek related like I have like I have an overwatch button-up and it looks very you know business casual that i can wear out out and about but if you guys haven't played final fantasy 7 rebirth um there's a costume change for cloud and he has this Choc chocobo button up it's this blue button up with with chocobos over and i'm like i can't wait to buy that shirt in real life <laughs> i love it and first of all i gotta say is it chocobo or chocobo you can say I've either always or. said chocobo there you can say either or i've, I've heard it both I guess I yeah, uh, aka the worst part of that entire game is that that saucer <laughs> racing. Oh, oh, brutal. Well, well, I mean, speaking of shirts, you're wearing the Godzilla shirt there, Kiwi. Represent, you know, uh, there's some some new uh, movies coming out, but I've been a long time uh, Zilla fan. My boy has been with me since childhood. I think I've even got a little bit of uh, Godzilla represented there. Yeah. Did you watch the new one yet? Oh, you're talking about Monarch, the series, or... The new movie. Minus. Oh, yes. I, I've seen everything up until this uh, Godzilla X Kong that's coming out pretty quick here. Okay, yeah, that one's that one's the other new one coming out. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm so stoked about it. I mean, um, you know, they get a little over the top. It gets a little Transformers these days with all the CG and everything going on. But it's just a big monster fighting monster kind of movie, and I'm all for it. But uh, the minus one was just, mwah, that yeah, was, I heard, that was I heard it's like the, the Snyder's version of DC, right? It's yeah. like you have the, the, the movie version and then you have the Snyder's version. And I heard the minus one was kind of like the original writer's version that they wanted to portray. And they finally got a chance to do that. And, and people were impressed. They were like, wow, this is wow. dark. But so uh, it's absolutely what we envisioned of not the Hollywood Godzilla to be about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It, it brought me right back to the uh, 90s, right? Even to the black and white era. Very, very just Godzilla, you know, stumbling around and, and knocking stuff over. And, and I just, I loved it. Nostalgia all day long. Yeah. You know, speaking of the kaiju genre, do you guys think that Pacific Rim got a fair shake? Ooh, that's such a great I, I, I personally love that movie. I, I loved it. I loved the first one the most, apparently, or obviously, but um it had potential, right? It, yeah. It, so it had the potential of, you know, monsters duking it out 
Um, and maybe at the time the CG wasn't there. Uh, so maybe if they did a remake of it, uh, it might it, it might just blow the roof off. So, you know, I wonder if we could use Sora to remake that movie by the end of this podcast. But I I have to say that the <laughs> first movie amazing, second movie ouch, like kind of the Matrix trilogy for me a little bit. But then there was that show on Netflix. There was like the Pacific Rim animated piece. And I thought that they crushed it. Like, I thought that was phenomenal. Like Voltron was on there. Yeah, well, Netflix is doing a great job bringing back classics and remakes. You know, they're doing their animes, which is uh, One Piece, Yu Yu, Avatar, Avatar. Avatar is a little shaky, mixed reviews, but uh, I thought it was great. I I thought it was great. The only thing with Avatar, right, is they they tried to take like 10 seasons and cram it into one. And you just you didn't get the same storytelling. Great. Some people like that. With One Piece, as you guys know, and everyone, hopefully our audience knows, like One Piece, there's thousands of episodes or fillers. A lot of time, and there and there's fan sites out there that actually will cut out the fillers and edit it and just give you like a hundred episodes. And it's like, okay, watch this in order, and so that way it doesn't have to be like Dragon Ball Z, yeah. biggest culprit, right, uh, of fillers Hi. and fluff. Yeah. So they did that with One Piece, and I. Personally, I like the Cliff Notes version of, of One Piece because it still it still showed the story of the first hundred episodes, <laughs> but into twelve, you know, or thirteen, or however how much it was. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. Whenever uh, somebody tells me to watch uh, One Piece or when I was starting it, right? They said just just give it the first like three hundred episodes, and then you'll <laughs> like it. <laughs> you know, it's interesting talking about old anime and you know, like Dragon Ball Z original. Dragon Ball Z was actually the reason why I, going to the theme of nostalgia, why I got a Super Famicom way back in the day was to play that OG fighting game. I played that again recently and it holds up, man. Like that, they were so far ahead of the time, but that was a total groundbreaker. That was, that Super Famicom was ahead of Sega CD, ahead, ahead of Saturn. I think it was actually pre-32X as well. Like it was, that was a real- Turbo graphics. Turbo graphics. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, well, well, speaking of Netflix, so I'm wearing my Cobra Kai shirt. Love the remake. It, Karate Kid was just nostalgia for me growing up. Um, Mr. Miyagi, you know, had such great advice and motivation for me growing up. Um, and it was that Cinderella story from Rags to Riches, you know, where you start off being bullied and then you becoming the champion. And funny enough, the bully becomes your certain does a, a 180 at direction at the end of the movie and becomes your friend. It's like, hey, you're, you're telling me sweep the leg. I don't feel comfortable doing this, even though I was bullying Danielson throughout the whole movie. And I was perfectly fine punching him in the face and stuff like that. But uh, sweeping the leg, you know, that's hands off. That's hands off. Whoa. <laughs> Too far, man. Yeah. Yeah. I already broke his other leg. What do I need to sweep this one for? <laughs> no, I mean, I I love I I loved, you know, the first three Karate Kid movies. I, I didn't like, you know, the, the remake of Chan- Jackie Chan or even the next Karate Kid. Unfortunately, I will say that too, where you know, the female version of the Karate Kid. Uh, they they definitely could have done it better, but um, you know, my heart was the first three Karate Kids. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh don't get me wrong, you know, the production quality, everything. The storytelling with, you know, Jackie Chan and and Jaden Smith. Um, I mean, it was an enjoyable movie, but did it have that same feeling or vibe? Definitely, definitely not for me anyways. I think Cobra Kai nailed that storytelling. And to come back and tell Johnny's side of it, right, Ooh. where he is the victim, he's the, the guy that got kicked around and everything like that. I just, I loved it. I loved the whole series. Um, I haven't seen... One season that I didn't really like yet. Well, you know, they're, they're, they're staying any, up any, again. On Venom, anything. Love it. Yeah. They're doing another spinoff again, just on Johnny alone. Oh. And I think it's a movie or they decided just to do a, the whole backstory because they're, I think they're trying to flush out Johnny's background when he grew up, you know, where he first found his sensei. It's crazy, but I'm for it. 
I'm all for it. <laughs> you know, I'm willing to see where it goes. Right. I mean, it's a it's a brand or a franchise more than just a, a movie now or a show. It's it can go in just about any direction. Right. I mean, it could pick up with any of the new characters that they introduce into Cobra Kai. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. I mean, you got Blue Beetle coming from uh, Cobra Kai's cast. I was going to say, I don't <laughs> I don't know if it's the same movie, but the actor. Yeah. And yeah. And first of all, let me say people shit on Blue Beetle. I thought it was enjoyable. I thought that was one of DC's much, much, much better movies. Oh, I agree because they shifted from the dark side of DC because, you know, yes. DC is known ever since Batman and they and they figured, you know, hey, we're going to we're going to continue the success of Batman where it's dark and gritty. And they tried to do it with Suicide Squad, which was OK. They, they added some humor. But again, it was dark and gritty. And I enjoyed Blue Beetle. Please don't come after me. <laughs> um, because they did try to marvelize it. They did try to do that Marvel formula where they had the great music, you know, it was the great music um, soundtrack. And then they had, you know, J uh, Lopez on there and they tried to add a lot more humor and make it more less dark. And I appreciated that. I feel like Blue Beetle like five years ago would have been absolute wrecker. Like it would have crushed. Right, it would have fallen right into that sweet spot of Guardians kind of music. Any Black Panther or even Doctor Strange level, like magic mysticism, laser blast, Ant-Man kind of an energy. Um, but it, it's so funny how it sort of fell outside of the meta. It just missed the superhero train. But yeah, Karate Kid, I, I feel like we, we can't talk about Karate Kid without addressing the elephant in the room, which is the three ninjas. Which oh, I don't. Oh, I don't know here. Academy Award across the board that year. I don't know. Jonathan Taylor Thomas, absolute breakthrough performance, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. I haven't seen Three Ninjas since I was a kid. I mean, one of my favorite <laughs> movies and the goofiest thing you will ever see. But Jonathan Taylor Thomas was one of them. I, you know what? We're no. gonna, you know, Jonathan Taylor. I just had to Google it. Jonathan Taylor Thomas wasn't it? Wasn't okay. it? Uh, Can we rewrite that history then? Because it, it was, I feel like it was Max Slade, Michael Trainer, and Chad Powers. Now he did look like Jonathan Taylor Thomas, absolutely. But uh, it's a Mandela effect happening right now. It, it was really Jonathan. is the Mandela effect. Uh, he definitely could have played in there. But I want to give a backstory. I saw this story once on on TikTok. Where do you remember the pizza, the bad guys, the pizza guys? You know, in, what I mean? like the dumb, the dumb Annoyed. surfers, villains. Mm -hmm. So there was three villains, of course, in three ninjas, right? So um, the Asian guy with the long hair, he wasn't meant to be one of the, the villains, right? The guy, the guy who meant to play his part showed up during casting and was just like, so starstruck and like so narcissistic he was like i want to be the lead i want to be the lead like what why i'm not the second villain so he leaves day one on the set so then um forgot his name but uh he there, there was a cast member or, or a production member he was a production crew and he was like i can play that role and then they were like okay um go ahead and play that role and you know you don't Maybe he won't we only won't give you lines. They gave him one line and he killed it. He had that, you know, that that valley. What's up, dude? Oh, yeah, the you? surfer you know, guy. That kind of voice. I, I, and he it's coming it. back. It's coming back. Yeah. So he killed it. And they're like, all right, we're gonna give him more lines. Because the whole the funniest scenes was remember the diarrhea scene where they gave them uh like Pepto or they gave them uh some laxatives, right? In in their in their pizza and their drinks. And uh, I just remember him going, oh, dude, my stomach, I'm going to hurl. Like, yeah, that's, dude, hurl this. That's a classic 90s way to take care of a villain, by the way. <laughs> you yeah, just put I, some laxative in their pizza. <laughs> I 100% didn't think anyone was actually going to remember the three ninjas when bringing that up in full transparency. Oh, no. So, you know, to the fact oh, that everyone did. Wow. Um, Ro Rolo, or no, I'm trying to remember the three names. Um, one ate everything that was in sight one tum -tum. was kind of the leader right and tum 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 tum, tum, -tum. was the yellow one that would eat and the masks they would oh just the cheesiest corniest stuff ever and i love it yeah because there was a three ninjas too wasn't there a three ninjas part I two i think there might have yeah. been three ninjas kick back kick yes yes there you go yes. three ninjas kick back 
Holy moly, man. DJ Harder played Hammer. Uh, he was the one that um, that came on to set. Was it? There's three three ninja movies. I didn't even realize there was a third one. When did the third one come out? 2022. Oh, okay. Well, that explains everything. Three Ninjas <laughs> High Noon. Three Ninjas High Noon. What? Oh, wait. You there's know, Three Ninjas Kick Back. Three wait. Ninjas Knuckle Up. Three Ninjas High Noon. And then Surf Ninjas. Well, I, I remember Surf Ninjas, too. Now, okay, wait. Wasn't Shang Tsung one of the bad guys in those movies? The the actor that played Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat? I think so. Hold on. Let's... Not sure. Okay. I apologize. Let me edit it back. Three Ninjas. Three Ninjas Kick Back. Three Ninjas Knuckle Up. There is another Three Ninjas movie, but I don't think it's the same cast. And then Surf Ninjas is definitely a different cast. Um, but he did look like he played in Mortal Kombat from Surf Ninjas. Yeah, Absolutely. It's, it's very possible, right? After you. Oh, Eric Rias. He played in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um, Part 2, where he played, where he infiltrated the, sh- the Foot Clan. Oh yeah, he's he's big. He actually played Ernie Raphael Reyes. in Ernie the suit. Reyes Jr. Yep, he he actually was Raphael as well. A lot of people don't know. Ooh, yeah, you're right. In the first one, in yeah, the first in one, suit. dude. Yeah. Oh my god, nostalgia memory lane. Definitely, if you haven't realized yet, that is that is our topic for the day. And with John bringing his Chrono Trigger shirt, you know, let's let's. Let's talk about it. What What is your favorite childhood memory, John? What, what is gaming to you? And how did you get started in the gaming, you know, that, that came into fruition for you? So long story, super short, gaming for me early on, you know, I, I grew up traveling the country with my dad, who was a long haul trucker, moving household goods. And uh, I figured out pretty quick that I love Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, and the Adams Family pinball uh, of all pinballs. And I found out pretty quick that I could actually hustle truckers for their quarters playing Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Uh, So that was one of my favorite my favorite experiences was as a as a young man (laughs) hustling truckers for their quarters. Random truck stops. Yeah, Yeah. he's on an FBI list somewhere. Do you have like a favorite memory of 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 a game of a throwback game like, you know, that when you can recall back to your memory growing up, like that's such a staple for me growing up. You know, I think the first time I cast Knights of the Round in Final Fantasy VII after getting that materia was like a real, because I had like my two best friends, we were there in the den, eating probably Cheetos and Mountain Dew, and like that was, the first time we saw that, we were all like, whoa, mind's blown, like went crazy, it was it was amazing. Yeah, and you had to wait for the five minute animation to be over. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you would hit go, yeah, but you and, enjoyed like, go it. the bathroom, microwave a Hot Pocket, and like, you had, it was unreal. Yeah, it's it's funny how you couldn't skip that scene back in the day, the original Final Fantasy VII game. But well, nowadays you can skip that scene. But I remember playing the 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 remake on it on um, PlayStation Four, and uh, and you can skip that scene. I was like, man, this was such a lifesaver. I, I wish we would have that option back in the day because it was so long. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of games followed that, right? Like uh, Golden Sun. You guys ever play Golden Sun on like uh, Game Boy? The original Game Boy was Golden Sun, and um, they had the same thing, right? You just you start a battle, you you pull out your your big move, and you put the Game Boy down, and you go get some chocolate milk or whatever. <laughs> you come <laughs> back later, and that's really quick. Yeah, and it's still going. You can hear the eight bit in the in the background. <laughs> yeah. What What about for you, Kiwi? What was your childhood memory like you know there's i obviously there's so many um i'm not gonna go too far back one of the biggest things was when the 64 came out that was one of the consoles that finally united my older brother and i we never got along obviously we're brothers we're siblings we'd rather beat each other up than be in the same room but when the 64 came out Smash Bros, F Zero, um, you name it, anything on that system, we were just, we were, we couldn't wait to play together and stay up late and do all that kind of good stuff, right? I mean, um, the sixty four was was huge in in my life. Yeah, I think for me, like the NES, the NES system for me was was my system, and that was like for me alone. And I had a, a brother and sister, younger brother and sister, growing up as well. 
But it wasn't until the Super Nintendo came out, and that's when Super Mario Kart came out. And I and I remember just my brother, and then of course my sister, right at the time where you gave my sister the, the empty controller that wasn't connected to the system, <laughs> yeah. so she felt like she was playing with us. And then me and my brother, we would you know be so competitive playing against each other. Uh, we were playing the battle mode where you had the three balloons yep. surrounding your 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 Mario Kart, <laughs> and um, we would it's... cheat, right? Because because back in the day, you know, you had the the split screen. And mm-hmm. so oh yeah. You're not supposed to screen. no screen checking. Come no, on. You no know, screen checking. You're not supposed to look at the other player's screen, right? You know, that's honor like system. The, the, yeah, that was supposed to be like the code of honor back in the day. But no, we were definitely I remember to a point to a time too, we would put a cardboard yeah, yeah. Actually, taped it to the screen, and then one person stood up, and the other person was sitting down, so we couldn't look at the other person's screen. Oh yeah, yeah, because you you got that red shell coming at you. You're seeing it on the screen, and you turn right, right at the last. Or, second. or not even that. I would do the banana peel. Yeah, <laughs> I would time the banana, banana peel, peel or yep. the green or the green turtle shell, so that way the red the red shell would hit that timed it oh, perfectly, yeah. and I would watch my brother just waiting. To see when he's gonna release that red that red show. <laughs> see now, those are the games that ruin friendships and and create rivalries. But I remember very vividly, my brother and I used to jam on Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters. We used to play those games together all the time. And the Ninja Turtle game, I mean, it just got a re-release on uh, Switch. It's just it's gold. I love it. I absolutely love it. I can remember every every level of that game just just from nostalgia and and how fun it was back then that reminds me of how game sounds were so incredibly pivotal and and there were certain sounds that you just to this day and and not just mario jumping or like the sound of a coin or sonic ring or something but like the original playstation startup sound for example that like that thing was like 30 seconds long or some insane, like 20 or 30 seconds long. It was crazy long. Remember, you'd start the thing up. And again, we had a different level of patience back then, I think. There were also loading screens, which was a thing at one point. But man, some of that, some of those sounds were just so incredible. You hear them now, and it's just like oh. time machine. Well, you know, a sound is is even more ingrained than the PlayStation. The PlayStation sound, I would say, yeah, it's up there. But if I say this sound, you guys are going to be like all in agreement. Like we all, we all know that sound. And that sound is Sega. Did you guys ever play a game called Toe Jam and Earl by chance? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Toe Jam oh, and Earl, for I sure. That's that back game. in the Earthworm Jim days. And the, it didn't and make any sense, but I loved it. Vector Man. <laughs> Toe Jam and Earl is why I learned my times tables. Like, my parents straight up bribed me with renting a Sega Genesis on Friday every other week if I did my times tables. And my best friend and I would play it literally for 48 consecutive hours, like 6 p.m. on Friday until 6 p.m. on Sunday. Just marathon. Yeah. yeah, it was like your first SpongeBob game because <laughs> it was like silly humor part of the game, and you, you really didn't know what the mission was. You didn't know what the point was standing yeah. on Toe Jam's, you know, shoulders or <laughs> or shooting him with a laser. It it just didn't make sense, but you just had fun playing with your with your friend. I know this nostalgic episode is going to leave. Fifty percent of anybody that watches this video going the fun like they're gonna they're they're gonna be googling half of this by the time they're done watching this for sure. <laughs> Toe Jam and Earl, what the hell is that? Oh, I know, and we're probably showing our age, in which all of us we we definitely are vampires. Uh, we drink the fountain of youth. Uh, we are not <laughs> what we are, we are we are we are not uh, as what it seems, but yes, we. We are old school gamers and we love that. And, and and there's a market for that. I think, John, we talked about that before where, you know, the boomer market back in the day, back in uh, late 90s and early 2000, where they were buying up, you know, nostalgia back in the boomer market where they're buying up like the pedal cars. Right. Or they were buying up the old baseball cards and they and, and they had a lot of money to spend. So they, they wanted to spend on their childhood. And the toy market, oh, remember the toy market in the late 90s was crazy. Oh, huge. You know, I you wish. Furbies. If I could have went back and just kept like 10% of the figures that I had when I was a kid, 
I mean, it would just be ridiculous probably what they're worth right now. Oh, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's and, and so the point is, you know, there's different cycles. And so now the boomers are still buying their nostalgia. But now that millennials and elder millennials and Gen X and even elder Gen Z, now they're buying the nostalgia. Like now we, we like the Mario movie. We go mm-hmm. into the movie theaters, you know, it's $50 per uh, <laughs> for two tickets. But then you're paying an extra $39.99 for a, uh, there you go, uh, a question block <laughs> yeah. popcorn bucket. Or a Dune popcorn bucket. No? Uh, I don't uh, know. It looked, it looked ouchy. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about the Dune one. That one you know was- what, though? I, I'm a culprit. <laughs> I, I, when the Duke Nukem game re-released, I got the figurine there. I bought the $150 package with the comic, the figurine, the game, all okay. that Duke Nukem forever for Xbox. I mean, I was that person. You got yeah. the $400 Sephiroth statue. There it is. <laughs> you, know you know what? But it's, it was, it was, it was, it was worth it when you go to your friends or when your friends come over and you can just throw it in their face. I got that edition. You didn't get that edition. I got that edition, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wasted my entire savings on that. It's nonsense. still worth that now. Yeah. Well, now the disposal income is a little different than it used to be, right? Yeah, our allowances have shifted. Yeah, my wife lets me buy something every once in a while. <laughs> you know, I actually, um, my so my hometown it was a place called Paradise, California, and it, it burned down. And I thought that my my dad's house got burned up, but it turns out I thought that a bunch of my stuff from my childhood got got roasted. Turns out that there was a few boxes that survived, and in one of them was all of my old X Men, Marvel cards, and my Magic cards. Mm. So I actually got all those back recently. Hey, and with the like the smell, I actually have the binders here if you ever want to see them. The smell, the tactile, it was like whoa, time machine. It was crazy. Oh, yeah, you know, speaking of Magic cards, I burned mine as well it was actually it was actually punishment Uh, i did something really bad (laughs) i was like a bad child growing up i was throwing rocks uh we were throwing rocks at at a junkyard and we were breaking windows car windows um and of course my parents you know they got the knock on the door from the cops and they're like is this your son like yeah that's my son well he he just busted up like 12 car windows and and of course my parents had to pay for it so they were like we're gonna really get you and, and we're going to hit you where, where, where it hurts. And at the time, <laughs> I was a big Magic the Gathering player. Oh. And uh, she was like, you're going to... I remember my mom said, you're going to burn these cards. And I was like, what? Oh, no. she made you do it. Yeah, she made oh. me do it. That's um, I, I deserved it. I, I absolutely there, did man. deserve it. But it was cool. painful. You know, for a police officer to show up to your door and your parents just action was you need to burn your collection of playing cards. I'm just glad she didn't make me give away my, you know, my Nintendo 64 at the time. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that that's grounds for um, where you uh, emancipation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah emancipation. <laughs> no, I love my parents, you know, very much. And, and, you know, it's just one of those things. It's just uh, it's just funny how my my cards got burned, too. But I, I remember Magic the Gathering. It was during the time of Pogs. You guys oh. remember Pogs? Love Pogs. You used to have some of the best slammers out there. Those slammers. Yokozuna Itchy Buns was my favorite one. It was when Yokozuna was real big before when he went to go wrestle in uh, WWF. Yep. So I had a slammer, a Pog that had Yokozuna scratching his ass. It said Yokozuna Itchy Buns. <laughs> that was my that was my prize. My ticket. I could I could take anybody with that thing. It weighed probably double what any of my other slammers did. Pogs was the rules of Pogs. It was like. Every you you each put in a, a stack, right? And you mm-hmm. slam it. You keep it. It was pink slips. Yeah. yeah. Pog, Pog taught us gambling because <laughs> yeah. whatever stack you won, you won. And for any of you that have no idea what a Pog is, shame on you, first of all. But second of all, we're just talking about little cardboard circles. Yes. So right. well monetized. Unreal. <laughs> Paying a dollar each for these little cardboard circles. Yep. Brilliant. That's, that's, that's really what it was. And what you would do is, you will have these slammers, which is like these heavy coins. And then you have the cardboard coins. Think of like baseball cards. And so you collect these pogs and your friend collects these pogs. And what you'll do is you'll gamble. <laughs> okay. So you'll, you'll, you'll put up maybe two, po- two pogs 
and your friend will put up two, two pogs. There was four in one stack. And they all have a face up and a face down. And so what you'll do with your slammer is you'll try to hit it where it will turn over the pogs face down. And so whatever's face down, you get to keep. Whatever's flipped over and face down, you get to keep. Mm-hmm. And I remember some of my friends, um, you know, they would pay, you know, like you said, like a dollar a pog. And the parents would actually come to my house later and be like, we want those pogs back because we bought them for our child. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Fair square, Karen. Fair is fair. <laughs> I, I don't I think already... Karen was back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of everything coming full circle, I think part of the whole nostalgia was not just like what you were playing or or what you were doing. It's it's kind of the where and and the process of it, right? And and what I'm leaning into is blockbuster, making making the comeback, right? Mm-hmm. The nostalgia, the the TV show they just released. Blockbuster used to be the place. I would go, I would rent games, I would sit there for an hour in their little section watching movies on a beanbag or something. I mean, I even worked at one at one point. Oh, uh, did you? I, I can see you working at Blockbuster. <laughs> loved. I mean, I worked at a GameStop too. I, I made my rounds, but I, Blockbuster for sure. I don't know if you guys have memories there. I'd be willing to bet you do, but that. Don, I'll let you. I'll let you go with your memory. You know, there wasn't a Blockbuster in my town, but there was a Hollywood Video. Hollywood place. Video. Yeah. Oh, that's that's the you know. Game. Don't copy my homework. <laughs> yeah, it was the generic. Yeah, yeah, the everyday value. Uh, but I remember they, they had the they had the five for five deal. You know, you read yeah. five things for five days for five bucks, and that was like revolutionary for me. But it turns out you can't really play five games in five days, so that was always kind of a that was a bummer. Yeah, but. The, you get five days to rent this game. You either beat it, you keep it and pay the uh, late fee, or you return it and then go back in and take it and take it back out. Yeah, um, or. You just keep it and never pay the fee that they charge you and go to a different Blockbuster. <laughs> blockbuster for me was I my fondest memories like dates. So uh, my parents were very cool. They they would allow me to have girls come over and sleep and actually sleep over, you know, during high school. Don't ask me how. Uh, yeah. A lot but, changed between those burnt magic cards and then that that's the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, I mean they they had to make it up to me, right? So they're like, yeah, we're just gonna <laughs> so and I think, too, I think we were like, I think at that time, too, it was like 17, too. So we were like borderline, you know, adult, you know, so it was whatever. But I remember taking dates, right? And we're like, let's rent a movie. And for me, memory lane was bringing my date to a blockbuster and we're just walking down the aisle. We, we'll start off with the new releases. We'll always start off with the new releases. We'll walk down that that aisle. And it's like, hey, 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 babe, what what are you in the mood for? And of course, the, you know, they're like, oh, I'm in the mood for she's all that. What else was another one? Um, you know, the by the way, he's talking about VHS. He's I talking just, about VHSs. Oh, yeah. yeah, VH. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Gen Z, but this is VHS. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We're be kind, rewind. So we were walking out, and 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 the walls had the covers, and behind it was the actual VHS tape. So if you wanted to get a movie, you would have to go behind the cover, get the actual VHS tape and bring it to the front. So if it's not there, that means they're out. They're out of stock. So it's like a live inventory. So we would walk down, you know, and all giddily 17 years old and like, oh, what what do you want to watch? What do you want to watch? And here and here I am looking at the corner of my eye. I'm looking at the the N64 aisle in the PlayStation. It's like, oh, there's there's a. There's a, a cool game that I want to play. And then what I'll do is like distract her. And then I would hide that game. I would put that game <laughs> in like, you know, the country section or like the kids section. And then I'll oh, come back the them. Day to get that game. Because, yeah, it was real time inventory. If that game was checked out, too bad. So sad. And, and there were certain unspoken rules when it came to that in, in blockbusters. Right. It's like almost like you knew if they didn't have your game, you check behind all the other games. <laughs> yeah, and then you go up that. to the counter and you ask if anybody's returned because they can look in the return bin real quick. And one unspoken rule that I broke constantly, and even my own friends closely disowned me. It, it was pretty it was pretty close. I was the person that would rent the game, and if it was new, I would keep the booklet. 
and take Oof. the game back. Ooh. No. I'm sorry. Ooh. I'm sorry. No. I hated that culprit. Yeah. Especially, I had a especially stack. well, I had let's a rewind stack. that. There the reason why people hated people that that did that is because back in the day, and again, I'm, I'm I think I'm just talking to Gen Z right now and Gen A, if they're watching. Listen, listen, youngsters. You're <laughs> about to learn. Because the youngsters are, are just probably Google. like, why can't you just go online and just figure it out? <laughs> no, <laughs> there was no there was no cheat code there was no manual that you can do online if you wanted to play a very strategic game like final fantasy tactics and you wanted to know what certain things did and what what certain skills were you needed that booklet and if you did not have that booklet you're sol like you're you had to figure it out you're, you're just guessing oh yeah right now. and there were no most of those games didn't even have tutorials no, there's no, no. Chat gpt back then either, y'all. there's no like <laughs> figure this out for me you were lucky. I, I remember Kiwi because of people like you. There were many <laughs> games that I would probably play like halfway through the like weekends and weekends of these games before I realized that I could hold down B and hit A at the same time, and it would actually like charge my laser. Yeah. Uh, so like, yeah. Well, I, I mean, know. okay. These booklets they had they had the controls, <laughs> they had the guides, they had tips and tricks, they had the best artwork in them. It yeah. was it was just a gold. It was a treasure trove if you had these booklets, and I had those booklets. <laughs> well, well, on the flip side, I I did not like the other side of that, where the booklets were intact but they were sticky. Oh yeah, like I don't know why they were sticky. Mountain Dew, we'll say or soda. Whatever. We'll say it was soda. Uh, go with Pepsi. To yeah, yeah. Let's just say that. And then they write all over it, like saying, "You suck. Oh. You're not going to you're not going to finish level one." Yeah. Yeah. Bullied. <laughs> the booklet it was like a slam book for blockbuster it was a slam book and then what you <laughs> oh. will do too is you'll write for the next person too as well i was like i hope that you die on this round <laughs> yeah or you know there would be pages missing and it would be the most important page of course that you needed yeah. right if well, i, I can mean go let's, back, let's take I way back written, let's say if, if i could go back i would write misleading tips like oh yeah here's how to beat this level just keep <laughs> trying until it works yeah let's take it way back Let's take it back to NES days, okay? And let's take it back to a critical piece of, of a manual that you needed to play. And this was like the very first 25 games released for the NES, right? Legend of Zelda came with a map, a yeah. map of where to go. Imagine someone taking away that map and you had to physically, because this is what I had to do, I my my map was somehow lost, like a lot like a lot of a lot of us did. We, we we lost our map, right? Or it was folded so many times that you just couldn't read it. So I remember getting my notebook and then actually physically drawing out the, each section that you load into, right? Of of the of the of the screen that you load into. And the dungeons too were crazy. Yeah, he's he's writing down the water temple and throwing his controller against the window. <laughs> it's like I wish I had my map. No, I never got that map. I know exactly what you're talking about, but the the Ocarina of Time had probably one of the best Legend of Zelda kind of uh booklets because the artwork was just so I was yeah, an artist. Was I used to love recreating and doing these drawings. And that book was just, it was artistic gold. And I absolutely loved it. Um, and I do remember, okay, this is this is really going to, I remember when Ocarina of Time came out, the internet started around that time. And uh, you could go online and start getting some, some tutorials and things like that. But before that, any other game, if you couldn't figure it out or you weren't one of the... Uh, you know, privileged few that could go to the game store or wherever and get the walkthrough book. Do you remember walkthrough books? I used to, I had a walkthrough book for some of the Final Fantasies, actually. Ooh, okay. Uh, that was another, that was another black um, yep. sheet kind of thing. Yep. So in high school, I remember we had, <laughs> this is how geeky we were. We had two sides. One, Nope, we ain't using a walkthrough. We are not looking game facts. Remember game yeah. facts, G A M E F. And they're still around. F A Q. Yeah, yeah. They're still around. But that was our chat GPT was game facts. Yeah. Back in the day. But I remember in high school, 
we had the tryhards, the sweats, and we were like, nope, we're not using a walkthrough. We're beating Final Fantasy VII without it. And then the other ones were like, why? Use the walkthrough. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so Kiwi's on that side and I'm on the other side. You know, I, I so I'll, I'll see you that and I'll raise you the Nintendo Power 1900 tip line yep. where they had yep. paid, trained people who you would call. And I actually got so stuck on Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. I could not get into that desert temple. And so I worked an entire weekend raking leaves up, up and down my street to save up the $4.99 that it costs to call this thing for literally a 30 second answer. But oh, I did. Yeah. Oh, it. my God. You, I They did a documentary. I remember on the that, commercials. On that yeah. night. It was, it's on Hulu somewhere. I think it was like, you know, the, the games that were made or something like that. Or you, I got to watch that documentary again. But I remember they Nintendo legit made it into like an actual corporate function for that 900 department. And they gave each other the jackets. Like they were yeah. interviewing with this one guy, and he's like, I still have my jacket. I would kill for that jacket. That jacket is amazing. Yeah. Uh, if you rocked that around in the early 90s, early 2000, man, you you were that was like Riz back in the day. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that was huge points for sure. That was huge. And and they trained them with manuals. Like they had, I remember this one girl, she was being interviewed, and she had like this binder, this this big, and she had to like really be a subject matter expert on all the games at the time. Yeah. You know, if I, you know, I think up. I've seen that documentary. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And they got paid well. So like, I think it was quoted like they got paid $20 an hour, which at that time was like $50 an hour. Yeah. I'd, I'd do it. I mean, I would do that. I might volunteer for that role now. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's so funny thinking about that. Those documentaries, I was, I was talking to somebody recently and they shared this really interesting perspective. And I'm curious to hear what you guys think. You know, many people's parents, often our dads, growing up had a car in the garage, like the, the fix up car, right? Like it's some old beat up, probably a muscle car that they you know, grew up dreaming about. Half of the parts are in the yard, half the parts are on the thing. Who knows where most of it is. Nowadays, you've got a lot of people who have like an arcade cabinet or pinball machine in the garage. And that's our new fix it up car. Do you think that that's a, an analogy that works for today? I mean, it's it's relevant. It's it's not like you're uh, too far off base. I, I know a few people that um, if it's not a pinball cabinet, it's some type of retro system that they're, uh, you know, dunking in chemicals to get rid of the yellow and uh, <laughs> the yellowing on the plastic. So, yeah, I, I do agree. I think uh, I think it's coming full circle. I, I, I agree, too. Like, I do feel like, you know. For me, that was a personal question that I wanted to get answered, whether I was going to get the old school Teenage Mutant and Turtle OG game, or am I going to do like the arcade one ups that you buy at like Walmart and Amazon half the price and it's on a, you know, on a smaller chipset. But I think people are also looking into, John, what you're saying is they're they're home brewing their cabinets and they're they're is it the pie system that's why i said the raspberry pie pies. raspberry yeah. pie yeah. yeah so they're looking into like the different raspberry pie systems and they're trying to do it that way um but honestly i also even taking it a step further i'm seeing a lot of trends where the gamer basements or the gamer caves and how are people are tricking them out right now and it's so cool like for instance, one example is like the movie theater room. So you know how they have like the digital photo frames or like the digital um, art frames. So the, like you, it's all digital. So like your art can re it's like a screen saver. It reloads Basically, it's like every hour there. with like a new art piece. Yeah. So I saw this one on TikTok where this, the movie theater room and this, this guy wanted the old 1950s movie posters. So it would have the digital screen of a 1950s, like to say, like, you know, bullet movie or whatever. And um, every hour it would change into another 1950s thing. It, it was so cool. Like that, like a little bit more technical and they're trying to trick it out that way. I think I think people are spending their time doing it that way. It's it's old meets new and I love it. I'm all for it. 
I mean, half the, you know, I have uh, two girls now, two kids, uh, half the time, the stuff I'm buying for them is really for me. I, oh, hey, look, at here's this really cool old, uh, I don't know, uh, Dragon Ball Z figurine. Uh, let me get that for you. And I'm just going to hold on to it. It's it's delicate, right? I'm just going to stick it up here. Your 18th birthday, come back for it. You know, it's no biggie. Long after you've forgotten about it. Yeah, yeah. She forgot about it after I bought it. It's okay. Well, as we, as we wrap up here, Triple W's. Yep. Um, we, we, went, we went from nostalgia, you know, and let's talk about with the you know Final Fantasy VII remake. What games would you like to see remade into modern times? Oh, I I have a few. I'm gonna jump right in because because one of the hidden gems that they tried to remake once and it was a big flop. Um, not Duke Nukem because they can remake that all they want. I'll play every single one of them. Conquer's Bad Fur Day. I would love a, and that's not necessarily old old right. That's late 90s conquers bad fur day would be incredible with today's graphics and uh the type of humor that it was right raunchy nasty humor that your parents don't want you even looking at and they had no idea this cute little furry squirrel was doing the things he was doing good i remember that game it's kind of like the leisure suit larry back (laughs) yeah yeah he was the predecessor to that for sure that was like the very first raunchy game Go go that look up banned. Conker's Bad Fur Day, everybody, and you'll see it's it's you're playing a game about a drunk squirrel that's living the the Hangover movie the next day. Mm-hmm. Wasn't there another one called like a Bender or something like that? Like I feel like somebody else made another again a generic version of that game called like well, something like Nuts in the Bender or something like that. They did make a uh, squirrel with a gun, yeah, and and basically it is just a squirrel running around with a gun. And it was actually really popular with the streamers. Very um, meta. Very meta. But no, that's awesome. What about you, John? Oh, man. Uh, boy, if I'm trying to combine like old and new, a few games come to mind like Humans, Lemmings. I really enjoyed those those sort of weird procedural platformers. But if it's like right now technology and one of my favorite games, it's actually a, a Blizzard predecessor from Sierra Online called The Incredible Machine which was basically the series of interlocking mechanisms that would ultimately like you create a Rube Goldberg machine and try to like pop a balloon or on, on PC oh, on PC. Yeah. I, I, what was it called? What was it called? The, the incredible machine. I've been trying to find that game for 20 years. Really? I loved it was, it was get the water from here to here, get the balloon uh, to here, get the, Yes. Uh, oh man, I yes. love that. honestly that game should like replace most engineering degrees at this point. Oh. But I would put that into spatial computing. So you put on your Apple Vision Pro and play that in like 3D and like build an infinite Rube Goldberg machine in your room. That's what I would yes. Hundred percent to that. And it was it was gears, pipes, ropes. Yeah, yeah. yeah and like yeah. and hamsters. Yep. And, yep. That could turn a wheel and power belts. something. And yeah. Yep. Wow. You already got your wish. You got Final Fantasy VII, man. Well, I mean, then obviously my other answer would, would, would be Final Fantasy three or Final Fantasy six Japanese version. But uh, I, I definitely think that they're going to do that. But, you know, there's there's a lot of do you guys remember T T and C surf surf games? I can't it's say like I the do. monkey surfer or it's like was Nintendo T and C T and G. Oh, surf yeah. games. So it, you could surf, you can skateboard. You know, it was basically like Cali, Cali living, right? <laughs> um, but that reminded me of Skate or Die. Oh, yeah. And, and yep. Skate or Die was mind blowing back in the day because I was just like, wow. I, the graphics at the time, I was like, well, you got this open. It was like open world, right? You can you can go to the skate shop to upgrade or you can go to the half pipe and, and duel people. And that was like the very first time for me where I saw sort of like that open world, like the very old school open world. But um, I just couldn't believe at the time. I was like, wow, that's so powerful. Like you can actually walk around a map and and you can like do certain events and you're not forced. Because, you know, when you think of side scrollers, you're forced. Mario and Sonic, you're, you're forced to go through the level. But I think this was the first time where you can actually have freedom of choice and like, hmm, all right, well, I think I'm going to upgrade my board today. You know? Yeah. Well, if you're a skater back in the day, you know, you don't follow rules. You can't let the man put you in your place. You skate where you want to skate. Skate where you want to skate. <laughs> skate or die. I love it. 
Good ones. Very good. I'm so happy, John. Thank you for mentioning that game because I'm not even joking. I've typed into Google several times, like mechanics games, right? Physics games, uh, gears, cogs, uh, water, ropes. Like I tried everything and I could never find that game. And I just remember playing it on my friend's uh, PC because we didn't have a PC until I was already in the Navy. <laughs> I think I yeah, I actually built my first PC to play that game. Or was like involved in building a PC, I should say, to play that game. Wow. He's made Kiwi's nightmare. Thank you. Yes. Well, yeah. this has been memory lane galore. Uh, hopefully, we didn't offend a lot of the Gen Zers out there. <laughs> if, if anything, hopefully, we would at least give you a taste of what it was like growing up, you know, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but any awesome. any final comments here before we go ahead and, uh, and end our show? That was the that was the John. <laughs> but I'll just say um, it all comes full circle. Right. Uh, I would definitely go play some of these classics or, you know, just uh, hold on to the things that you're doing right now. Right. Because you never know which one of them is going to end up being that classic that you talk about 20 years from now. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, Kiwi stole mine. It was basically hold on to whatever the Charizard card of today is, right? Like don't sell your don't sell your Charizard cards, folks. Uh, <laughs> or don't do don't break windows in a junkyard and be forced to burn them. So, <laughs> At um, least hide that one. Oh, I would man. say, you know what? The one thing I would say is this: nostalgia is one of the most powerful things out there, especially right now in terms of marketing and. Just lean into what you love now, because even if it's dorky today, it's going to be mainstream in 10 to 20 years. And you'll be on a podcast talking about it. That's right. And girls might actually like you. Well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a different topic of the show, like how geeks became into popular, you know, mainstream. You know, that's, yeah. def that's definitely a different topic. I would say this, you know, in, in terms of nostalgia and, and everything else here is kids nowadays are learning or starting to are starting to get vinyl records and they're starting to get eight tracks and they're learning more about the history. And it's kind of funny. We can mention titles like Goonies and back to the future and Gen Z doesn't even know about it, but I, I love that they're, you know, Gen Z is now having that appetite to learn about the history. And I would encourage if, if any of this doesn't make any sense, to to look at that history, play some of the old school Nintendo games like skate or die you know, those games really made the, the games that we play now really enjoyable. So be a student, be curious, and it's okay, you know, to play the old school games, even if, even though if they're 8-bit. <laughs> I agree. And I, I think one more thing is if you're doing a podcast, remember to turn your lights on. <laughs> we totally forgot about that. <laughs> That's all right. Let's just, let's just take it again one more time, guys. Yeah, That's yeah. Let's just, let's let's just wrap this up. No, all no. Right. But it, thank you guys. Uh, Wonderful chat. Always kicking it with you guys. Really appreciate it. And we're uh, hopefully next episode, we'll see you again.